Hello. Welcome to the MEPFusion webinar to help you understand how we ensure your MU3 or MEPS ready. Before delving into the changes we've been making to the portal, I'd like to briefly go over the necessity of these. You may have heard by now that Medicare Part B has a, well, fairly new program known as MACRA. Now, as we're getting close to the second payment year of MACRA, that's 2018, uh, the final rule that just came out uh, ensured that MACRA will again have three parts that you can earn points in, which is ACI, that's Advancing Clinical Information, CPIA, Clinical Practice Improvement Activities, and Quality. All three of these will be counting towards your total score in 2018. Now, uh, a brief history just to go back. MACRA affects only a part of the Medicare program, while Medicaid will still be following the MU3 rulings released in 2015. Now, this is how it has been split up for right now, but we will keep you updated as changes are brought about. We here at MedFusion have been working with our meaningful use advisors and consultants to find out how you can best use the portal to meet these various incentive programs. And I would encourage all our practices to do the same and then collaborate with us and give us feedback to ensure you're meeting your goals. Now an important change with these uh, new programs is the requirement for using 2015 edition certified software. Now in 2017, practices could use either the 2014 or the 2015 edition certified software. The same is applicable even in 2018 where you can use either version 2014 or 2015. But in 2019, the 2015 edition certified software will become a requirement. There is an added advantage if you're using exclusively 2015 edition certified software in 2018 you get up to 10% bonus points in the ECI category. Now MedFusion has successfully certified with GE for the 2015 edition of HIT certification early this, earlier this year. So you can uh, in, be insured as long as you're on the right version of CPS and the right version of the MedFusion integration, you will be using the 2015 edition certified software in 2018. Now we've tossed around a lot of terms like the 2018 program, 2015 edition, MU3 and so on. How are these related and how does any of this matter to your objective? Let's take a quick look at this chart showing how the ONC certification criteria are related to your CMS programs like MACRA or MU3. CMS releases and manages the incentive programs that you all know and love, like PQRS or MU or MACRA. Over the years, they've released various versions of MU and now MACRA. All these programs have various measures which point back to specific ways that a practice is expected to use healthcare technology. ONC, on the other hand, governs the standards and functionalities that the health IT software is required to have and meet. What this does is it ensures that there are standardized and certified software which practices can then use to meet their measures. So now, while the CMS has released a new MACRA program and MU3, ONC has a corresponding set of criteria for the 2015 edition with new standards that HIT vendors like us need to meet. A lot of today's webinar will cover these specific changes as required by the criterion and how they affect your workflows. I will first go into the measures in 2018, most of which you're familiar with, and we'll talk through the changes to user experience that the related ONC criterion brings along. The first measure we will talk about is patient electronic access, which actually has two parts, which are two separate measures that provide patient access and view, download, and transmit. Thresholds for both these parts have changed and will differ by the program you choose, that is MACRA or MU3. From the portal point of view, providing patient access is a required base measure and it remains largely unaffected in terms of workflow. 
for the view download transmit measure, however, there are some significant changes to the user experience as mandated by the new OMT criterion, which we will take a quick look at. The biggest change is the fact that patients can now view a list of CCDs under the health record section. Patients can then filter these CCDs by date or a date range and then download or transmit them in bulk. With the transmit option, we are also now mandated to allow patients to transmit their records via standard email. We do call out here the risk of this to the patient, and as an added security measure, we don't just send CCDs as attachments, but instead send a link to a secure location where they're stored. The receiving party is then required to identify a few key information uh, points about themselves before they're able to access the CCD, thus ensuring that we're maintaining a level of security. The next measure we're talking about is secure messaging. This measure, again, remains largely unaffected in terms of the workflow. The only change the OMC required was using a higher encryption algorithm in this workflow to ensure the patient's connection and data is being kept safe. Medfusion has actually been using these higher standards for a while, so we have and will continue to meet this criteria. Another change in is the fact that your CQR reports will be counting provider-initiated messages, including a provider's reply to patient messages, as well as messages they've initiated themselves. These will now be counted with two new events, that's event 522 and 523, instead of patient-initiated messages with event 520 as it previously was. To count these additional events and our uh, making sure you are using the highest encryption algorithm, you will need to ensure your practice has both the latest CPS version as well as a Medfusion integration version above 17.4.2. There have been several marketing emails sent, uh, sent around this specifically for this measure. So uh, you may have already scheduled an upgrade, but if you haven't, please ensure you do so before the end of the year to make sure you're able to count all these new events going into the next year. A newer measure you can meet with the portal is sending patient education electronically. There are no changes for the step to access the patient education, which is still through the info button in all the regular places like you normally do in a GE. However, once you access it, you now have the ability to save a PDF of the patient education uh, document to the chart. This can then be sent using regular secure message or automated using our automated messaging workflow. This is done through, um, when you do open up the patient education box, you'll see a new icon on the top toolbar. Though it looks like a mailbox, this button just saves the PDF to the chart. Now, once you have accessed the patient education and then click this button, the PDF is saved to the chart. And if you have purchased NetFusion's automated messaging solution, at this point, this is the end of your workflow. Medfusion will automatically pick up this document and send it to the patient's portal account. If you do not have the automated messaging solution, you can send this patient education as an attachment to the secure message using your regular workflows. Medfusion now offers integrated to be direct messaging. Uh, we've been offering this since earlier this year, however, only sending of the messages was integrated initially. We now offer both receiving and sending P2P messages with the same license solution that you can purchase. Receive direct messages can be accessed through the Midfusion messaging tab. 
each user can be associated with multiple email addresses, which they can then toggle between to view messages particular to a certain account. When you do receive a message with an incoming transition of care CCDA document, this can then be previewed within the screen and then either be saved to a desktop location or, or using this icon added to the patient's chart. In combination with this, we also have integrated and automated sending summaries of care. This has been available since earlier this year and uh, remains largely unchanged again. Uh, Medfusion writes event 514 to indicate that the transition of care was sent electronically over the direct network. As a reminder, our integrated sending P2P workflow allows the user to send a TLC as soon as a referral order is placed and then as soon as you have configured an external provider with the right electronic direct address and then sign the order. At this point, your workload has ended and the transition of care has been sent automatically. These are all the measures that the Medfusion patient portal can be used to meet for your ECI or any three objectives. Switching gears a bit, I have here a few quotes from the Federal Register that highlight uh, the importance of using health IT software for uh, achieving your practices goals. And um, CMS also gives you an incentive to use certified health IT software to meet clinical practice improvement activities. Here are some examples of activities that the practice can leverage their certified portal to meet. These depend very strongly on the implementation your practice chooses, chooses, but we encourage you to look at really leveraging the portal to be your patient engagement platform. Just to be clear, for CCIA, we don't do numerator denominator reporting, but instead you would be talking to your reporting agency as well as your MU advisors to understand how you can really use the certified health IT software to be able to meet these activities that you have chosen. That's it for me today. Uh, I would like to definitely point out that uh, any information that you would need will be found at the CMS website for quality payment programs available at this location. This website has uh, greatly improved <laughs> over the years and is definitely the best place to view any uh, information you have as well as contact CMS directly with any questions you have. That's it for me today. Uh, thank you for participating with us and we look forward to your questions and feedback.